What's up guys, E-Drone here. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at the new Ruko F11 Mini. Stay tuned. Taking a look at the packaging here from Ruko, you see we have a nice clean sleek box showing some of the uh, features on the side here, which we'll go over in this video. Go ahead and remove the cellophane wrapping here. Comes with a nice carrying case, uh, user manual with a quick start guide. And this carrying case has a really nice uh, feel to it. Looks like it's going to be definitely durable. Maybe a little bit of water resistance as well. Comes with a nice strap and a front pocket. And if you open this case up, you will see everything inside here, which we're going to take a look at. Case is nice felt lined, really soft padding inside. Comes with a nice little instruction guide here for your controller. Taking a look at what you get, you get the drone, the controller, quick start guide, instruction manual, uh, extra propellers. You get two batteries with this. You also get the carrying case. You get the charging cords and a Phillips head screwdriver for changing props. Taking a look at the battery, we have a two cell 2100 milliamp and it is a proprietary design, uh, has a clip, and it also has a, a status indicator, which I really like, that shows the uh, status level of the battery. Take a look at the controller here. You see we have a couple buttons on the top for uh, camera tilt, as well as photo and video. Folding down the arms, you can get the micro USB for charging. Has a phone holder here. that keeps it at a pretty decent angle while you're flying. And this opens up and fits a wide variety of devices. The gimbals feel okay. Uh, we have a one button take off and land, GPS, compass, and the return to home. In the rear of the controller is the fold out control antenna here. And the, it, this is the actual antenna for controlling it, so you want to make sure that's folded up when flying. Take a look at the drone, we have a plastic gimbal cover, and it just pushes out and just pulls right off, which I really like this design. It's easy to use. Protect the camera. You have some nice side protection here, some plastic on the sides. And the camera itself has a little bit of vibration uh, dampening. No, uh, no, th no three axis gimbal or two axis gimbal on this. Okay, foldable design. You're gonna wanna fold out the front arms first. And you can see on the side here, we have the micro SD card slot up to 128 gigabyte. If you try to fold the rear arms first, it will not fold, unfold. So go ahead and unfold the front, then the rear. I like the look of this design. Um, it has a really clean, nice stance. The battery pushes in, it clicks. Um, it, ha it has a gap between the power connectors, which I'm not crazy about, but it does you know, click into place. Um, yeah, so the battery, I could use some improvement. Now push to turn it on, you're gonna push once and then push and hold. The, bat uh, the drain will come on. And same thing to turn it off, you're gonna push once and then push and hold until the lights go down on the battery indicator and then the drone will power off. Take a look at this design, we have brushless motors. I really like the fact that this is using brushless motors. Nice clean sleek design on this. And I also like that it has a uh, mechanical camera tilt here on the controller. You can push and hold for it to uh, go down and up or you can push once to get slow increments up and down. So depending on what kind of shots you wanna get, this is gonna allow you to look straight down while you're in the air. And coming on the scales, 242 and a half grams. Plenty of room to uh, add a strobe for night flight, anything like that, you have a little bit of room to work with. Real, all in all, really nice design. I like the look of this one. Let's go ahead and take it out and get ready for a test flight. I'm gonna go ahead and get ready to get the drone set up for our first flight. And we're gonna check out some of the features. Uh, I'm not gonna be hooking my uh, phone to the controller for this particular test, but I, I am going to go over the uh, the app on the device um, a little bit later in the video, so make sure you stay tuned for that. So, first thing you need to do is go ahead and make sure your battery's charged. Put the battery in the back of the drone. You're going to go ahead and, and sit this on a flat surface. You're going to push the back of the battery once, and then push and hold until the lights light up. You'll get the chimes. All right, now the drone's powered up. Now we can go ahead and turn on the controller. Okay, go ahead and push the power button. You'll see the green light is flashing. Now, 
we need to stand directly behind the drone with the camera facing forward and what we need to do is we need to link the controller to the drone by taking the left joystick pushing it up down the green light will go solid on the controller indicating that you are now connected to the controller so as far as the link is concerned now what we need to do is we need to go ahead and calibrate the compass for the gps in this drone now in order to do that you don't want to have anything metal around the drone we're going to take it over here in the grass to do the calibration and we're going to um go ahead and lay the controller down so first thing we need to do is we're just going to set the controller right here pick up the craft we're going to take the controller and push the gps button once and if you see the lights on the back you can see they're yellow you're going to rotate the drone horizontally just like this keep rotating about three turns okay you see the beep on the controller and the lights flash now point the camera upward like this and spin it this direction you'll get another beeping on the controller and the lights are going to turn to green right here and then we're going to go ahead and set this back down now the compass has been calibrated for the gps so that's done okay so now that we've got everything calibrated we're going to go ahead and prepare to do the uh, takeoff hover and just check the gps hold see how much it's going to hold and i'm going to go ahead and pop the stats up on the screen for the weather conditions for the time that we're flying right now so you can see the wind and all that but it's a relatively calm day so it should be a good day to go ahead and test out the gps see how stable it is and then we're going to also do the return to home so in order to take off you can do it a couple different ways um you need to hold the sticks uh, down and in towards the center to arm the quadcopter as you can see the quadcopter armed that's good now you can either use the left joystick and push it up to raise the quadcopter or you can push this button here to do an automatic takeoff let's go ahead and try the automatic takeoff push it once okay it's gonna raise out dude Gonna give it a minute and see how it holds. Give it a minute. Make sure it locks in. All right, as you can see, it's kind of getting itself locked in. And like I said, we have a little bit of wind out here that it's gonna be fighting. But all in all, it's holding its position very nicely now. Let's go ahead and uh, move forward. Just gonna see how it performs out here. All right, but it's actually hovering really nicely right now. You can see it's hovering in place. So the GPS is doing a good job of holding its position. Go up a little bit higher. Just kind of check it up here. So we're going to go a little bit higher here and just fly forward. Okay. Everything's looking good. Go a little bit higher. All right. Position seems to be holding pretty well. Not bad for this price uh, quadcopter for sure. I'm, ha I'm very happy that the GPS calibration uh, seems to be pretty simple and it seems to be working effectively. So that's good. Go up a little bit higher. Now I'm gonna go ahead and try the return to home. So right here, you'll see the little H button here. Go ahead and push that. Okay. Now the drone is going to fly back to the position that it came pretty fast actually too all right so now it is coming back to us all right and it's starting to descend now now that what you need to keep in mind about the return to home is 
If this quadcopter is 65 feet or higher, it will just come back. Um, if the quadcopter, not bad, not bad at all. That's perfectly acceptable. We took off from the landing pad, but you can see we were within like three feet. Not bad at all, guys. I'm actually really impressed with that. The return at home seemed to work really good. So return at home is working great. Um, but what I was saying about the return to home is you have to keep in mind that if the quadcopter is under 65 feet high, the quadcopter will automatically rise up to 65 feet and then start return to home. So keep that in mind um, if you're flying this. You want to make sure that you know you know ahead of time that if it's if it's under 65 feet high the drone will rise up to 65 feet to come back home and it, this doesn't have any obstacle avoidance so just make sure when you use the return to home function you're very well aware of your surroundings guys right, final thoughts on the new ruko f11 mini um all in all i do like this quadcopter i like the fact that it has gps I like that it's sub 250. I really like that the camera rotates 90 degrees with the controller so you can look straight down while you're in the air. Um, and I like the fact that it's using brushless motors. I like the uh, LED indicators on the back of the rear arms as well. All in all, I feel it's a good, definitely a good value quadcopter for the sale price. However, uh, let's talk about some of the things that I don't like about it. Some of the things I don't like about it is the fact that uh, this uh, seems to get a lot of jello in. Um, while it, it does have like a little bit of a buffering system in here, it really does not uh, eliminate a lot of the unwanted jello in your footage. So this is definitely gonna be for a beginner, somebody who's just getting into drones. Maybe maybe you're just looking to get a little bit of, uh, you know, really amateur style photography, maybe a couple little, you know, a uh, little bit of video uh, experience. Um, at the sale price, I still would recommend this drone, uh, even with, the the the, uh, the the jello issues with the camera but I, I can't recommend this drone for the full price value so if you see this drone and it's still on sale I definitely recommend picking it up for that sale price if it's not if it's at a full price um, then I deck I, I would definitely steer you more towards uh, maybe going with a DJI mini or even a DJI mini 2 um, but that being said I like to see that there's competitors out here that are putting out decent quality products um, you know, added a, an affordable price and the camera quality is really good. I actually really do like the camera quality itself. I like the 2.7K video. The photo resolution seems to be nice as well. Um, if we could just work on that, that jello with the, the whole uh, little buffering system that we have here, I think this would be an even better value. Um, but I wanted to put my honest opinion out here and let you know that that's one of the downfalls about this quadcopter. Uh, second thing that I, uh, you, you need to be aware of when you're flying this quadcopter is this is a Wi-Fi enabled quadcopter, which means that the Wi-Fi is going to connect to your device and then you're going to use the controller to control this. Now, you're going to want to fly this around hardly any Wi-Fi. You, you're going to want zero to the very minimum Wi-Fi interference when flying this. Otherwise, you're going to have issues. I noticed when flying uh, around a heavy, a heavy Wi-Fi um, interference area i was getting a little bit of drifting um, with the drone as well as disconnects from the app so keep in mind that this is a wi-fi based quadcopter you're going to want to fly this around very little wi-fi or none if you can help it go somewhere maybe a nice rural area where there's you know very minimal wi-fi interference i noticed that when i flew this in an area that that was away from a lot of wi-fi it performed a lot better so keep that in mind when you're flying this um, also, I, li I do like the app. It's very intuitive, easy to use. I like the way the app's laid out. I like that there's multiple options for beginner mode. I like that uh, there's different settings you can change for the, um, you know, as far as how far the quadcopter will go vertically versus horizontally. I really like that as well. Uh, the app interface seems to be easy to use and easy to navigate. But thank you guys so much for watching. Link for the Ruku F11 Mini will be down in the video description if you want to check that out. Like I said, if you can pick it up for the sale price, I highly recommend doing that. Um, if it's full price, I would I would stay away and, and maybe get you a DJI uh, Mini or a DJI Mini 2 because uh, that's going to be a, a better value for that price point. But if you can find this at the sale price, definitely hop on that. I'll put links down in the video description. And thank you guys so much for watching. There's going to be more uh, GPS quadcopter reviews on the channel, so stay tuned for that. And until next time, guys, thanks so much for watching. E-Drone, out.